podcast in America. John Reed, Cody McClure. I'm in Tennessee. Cody is planting his roots, spreading his seeds all over Texas. Cody, how are you on this Thursday afternoon? Uh, I'm doing good, John. Hang on, I was just making sure I'm on the Wi-Fi there. I should have done yeah, that, that before we started, but... That, that's fine. Um, Scratch that anyways. It's Thursday morning, so great start to the podcast because it's not even afternoon yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Thursday morning, uh, March... Uh, what is today? 12th? No. The 14th. The 14th. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta start. be honest. <laughs> I gotta be honest. 11.57 a.m. feels a little too late for me to call it morning, though. At 11.57. I mean, yeah, technically that's morning, but it, it's like when we used to go into the studio and I would I would say good morning to the to Charlie or the show in front of us, you know, and Charlie would be like, oh, morning? I'd be like, well, yeah, technically it's morning. It's 11.57. He's yeah, like, I've oh. been up. I've been up for like six hours doing things already. It doesn't feel like morning. It finally kind of hit home. You know, obviously I've been getting up earlier. I do the morning show now instead of the afternoon show. But like, I don't think it really f- set in until I came home today to do this. Because typically I haven't been coming home much earlier than I was when I was on the other schedule. My my schedule then would pretty much be I leave the house at 11, 10.45 somewhere around that time, do the show, get off at three, go to the gym, get home around five, five 30, sometime around then. So far, since I've moved to the mornings, my schedule has been wake up at six, leave by six 30, get off the show, eat lunch, hang around the studio till two or three o'clock, go to the hang around, hang around the studio probably till about one 30 or two o'clock, go to the gym, get home at four 30. So it hasn't been too different. But then today I came home to do this because you want to do it in the mornings. And I turned on ESPN and that Jerry O'Connell Pictionary show was on. And yeah. <laughs> first take is on. And I'm like, whoa, this used to be my morning routine. And now it's like I'm already done with the show routine. And it kind of tripped me out a little bit. The daytime well, television being on really confused me. Yeah, before you know it, you'll be on the you'll be watching Price is Right. <laughs> it's that's what, uh, when I was younger, when my mom was off work for a while between jobs, I remember waking up every morning and she'd be watching Price is Right. And then now, or, you know, the last uh, year or so when I was living with Miles, he does the same thing. So I would wake up every morning to the sound of Price is Right and feel like I was a kid again. <laughs> Which probably wasn't good for you because the radio show started at 12. And if you're saying you're waking up to the Price is Right, which starts at 11, that seems like you were... <laughs> Already starting the day behind the eight ball. I have those memories too, because whenever I was in, you know, young elementary school, third, fourth grade, second grade, my mom was working preload, pre shift at UPS, you know, helping load the packages or Mm -hmm. loading the trucks, loading the packages. And, you know, she'd go in at work at like 3 30 a.m. and get home like nine or 10 or so. But yeah, then we would watch The Price is Right after she had been off work. Which is a completely different story than what you said about your ma, who yeah. was jobless, an unemployed bum, and my ma had been <laughs> up working since three thirty a.m. Well, my ma was at this time. I think she was just kind of milking the unemployment because she she had worked at this factory for like seventeen years, you know. And they they moved to Mexico as factories do, and so she was just between jobs. They took her jobs. That really happened to you, or to your mom at least. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. It was cheaper for them to operate down there, I guess, down there in Guadalajara or wherever they went. So, um, but no, I was going to ask you though, I mean, because I know we've done this twice this week now, but is this time okay for you or is this not ideal? Because, it, you know, we might have to figure something else out. I mean, this is working best for me, but I want to make sure that you're, you know, doing what you need to do. So I won't call it ideal by any means because I have to come back home. Yeah. And then I want to go back out and I, I, I do want to go to the gym. I'm, I'm trying to lose some weight over the next six weeks or so. I want to lose, you know, 10, 15 pounds or so. So like, I want to make sure. Yeah. I want to make sure that like, I'm actually like not slacking on the gym because I have been, you know, since I moved to the morning show really since Thanksgiving, really the holiday season. I never have kind of gotten back into my good routine since the holiday season. And then the morning has kind of killed me just because I've been sleepy and not necessarily had the same energy. 
So I won't call this ideal. I did like doing it at like two o'clock, but I understand you've got to commute and you've got to go out and, and drive to Austin. So it's fine. I can make it work. I prefer this to doing it late at night for now. Okay. So like okay. I can come in, eat lunch, let it digest. It's just like a 10 minute drive back to the gym. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm leaving well, early enough where I'm not getting caught in traffic. I know you like to do some work after the show sometimes in the middle of the day. So I just, I, I wanted to, I didn't know if you still had time to do what you need to do and everything, but so far it's okay. Okay. Well, this is, yeah, I mean, it's definitely good for me because it takes me a while to drive into Austin. I mean, it's like almost an hour drive, so I can't really, and it's almost 50 miles. So like doing that twice a day back and forth would be like 200 miles. So, you know, it's, uh, it's best that once I go into Austin, I don't have to come back until the end of the night, but no, yeah, um, for sure. No, it's fine. We'll see what happens when you start your job. If you get yeah, your job sure. and we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> like I said, we might have to get creative with the scheduling, but are you liking Austin so far? Oh yeah. Austin's cool. I, I'm, I'm enjoying being back in the real world, back around people. You know, I mean, LA was cool. I'm glad I got to experience it for a while, but it really is la la land in some ways. So it's it's nice to be back in the in real America, you know, especially way out here. I mean, it's nice and quiet, and and there, there's no anxiety out here. You know, when I when I get in, there's I don't have Iranians screaming next door to me, and um, not that that matters that they're Iranian or, or Armenian or whatever they are. It, it doesn't matter, you know, what race they are. I want to make that clear, but. Middle so Eastern happened. is really what you're trying to drive home. Middle Eastern. It doesn't matter if they're Iranian, Armenian, or whatever. Hey, Middle Eastern. A, a turban's a turban, the way I look at it. You know, and, and those people are great. They're, they're nice people. It's just that, you know, I don't understand the language. Out here, things move a little slower. I got Texans around me, real authentic Texans. You know, I wake up, the old man next door has got his dog and his cup of coffee. And yeah, good morning. How you doing? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm getting ready to practice my Second Amendment right. That's they good say please and thank you. They say sir and ma'am. And if you ain't into that, they don't give a damn. That's right. That's right. You damn right. Especially this little town near me. You know, it's uh, it, it's small town America. So I'm enjoying it. And then Austin, you know, I get to go into Austin and get my my high energy city vibe. So. So it's it's been good. It's been good. Everything's good here so far. Be careful what you wish for, buddy, with this country living. I got a phone call last night. I'm doing my other podcast, the Reed's Ranch podcast. I uh, am already kind of flaking. I'm supposed to be playing kickball this season. I'm having to flake on that because I had to record and set that to do a certain time. So I'm already feeling a little stressed and a little bad. And then my ma calls me and is like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, nothing, editing my podcast, putting it up, uploading it. And she's like, oh, so you're not recording a podcast, right? And I was like, no. She's like, you got any plans tonight? And I was like, no. Thinking she was going to invite me to dinner or something, maybe had like a surprise. And she's like, well, can you uh, drop down to Lenore City and help me load some firewood that this guy's giving me off the side of the road? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I was doing my route. You know, she delivers packages for UPS. I was doing my route. And a tree had fallen, and some man was cutting it up. And we got to talking, and he said I could have, you know, half of this firewood. And it's like $200 worth of wood. Do you care to help me load it up? And at that point, I'd already said I wasn't doing anything. So I was like, yeah, sure, Ma. I'll help you. And then that turned into, well, here's the directions. And it turned into, well, if you get there before me, just here's how you do it and just start loading it up. And I was like, oh, my God. So not only did I agree to this i'm having to go handle this guy and do all this like by myself without you even being there for most of it well you could uh you could count that as your workout for the day loading up well i'd already worked and... out i would already oh. got my workout in yesterday this was 7 45 as i'm starting to sweat some early early action in the acc tournament i'm trying to bring dj burns <laughs> and north carolina state home over syracuse and meanwhile i have to pause it and set the dvr so i can go load up some goddamn firewood now, $200 worth of firewood, how many ricks is that in today's currency? Because back in the day, that would have been probably four truck bed loads of firewood from what I remember, but now it's probably not, is it? It was one full load, like in the back of a big truck, like a truck bed. Like it, the, the truck bed was pretty full, and, the, and the, you know, we stacked it pretty tall. Like, I don't know how, you know, how close 
my mother's finger is to the pulse of the firewood scene. Like, I don't know if that's an accurate estimation of how much money I made her or saved her, but she said Man. it was two hundred dollars worth. Man, this economy today that used to be fifty dollars because I remember I used to do, I used to load up wood for my grandma. You know, and it would be a truck bed. You know, they basically call it like a rick of wood, and she'd pay like fifty dollars. But that was fifteen, twenty years ago. So I'm sure it's more now. But uh, what what does your mom use it for? Does she have one of those like outdoor furnaces or? She's bought she bought her a big RV, and, and she's going to get into. I think she's actually selling the RV and going to buy like a camper and like. Apparently, there's some things she can buy, like the land, and the camper comes up there, and it's like so far, like secluded in the woods, and that's what she's going to buy instead. I don't, I don't know, I don't oh, know okay. exactly. I just know she used to have, or she bought a nice RV, and then told me recently that she is going to sell it and that she's going to have a camper now. I don't know. She said she needed firewood for the spring and for the nights out there, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll be there to help you load it up. Yeah. But then we had the whole thing where it's like. She could tell I'm upset, but then she's making it worse because she keeps apologizing and keeps trying to tiptoe around asking me to do the favor, and then I'm not being cheery enough. She's like, well, I'm sorry I made you do this. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I was like, let's just load up the damn wood. <laughs> and then, like, I leave. Well, she almost drops it. She did get there and help eventually, and she almost dropped a big heavy one on my foot. And I was wearing just, like, flip-flop slides or whatever, some, some slides. Oh, man. And it came very close to her breaking my foot. And then, you know, we loaded up, whatever. And then afterwards, like I'm driving home and she calls me. She's like, hey, just so you know, uh, when you get home, maybe wash your hands. If you got any Dawn soap, there might be poison ivy on there. And then oh, immediately, man. like my whole body starts itching, just like my <laughs> mind. I'm like, oh, my God, I got poison ivy all over me. And she's like, well, I know if I give it, if you get poison ivy, I'm going to get the blame. And I was like, fuck, yeah, who else would get the blame? <laughs> yes. Yes, you're going to get the blame if I get poison ivy because you've got all this firewood and made me go pick it up. I don't. I don't think to check for poison ivy on firewood that's on the side of the road. I know not to go in the woods. I know better than that. (laughs) What do you expect me to just blame God for putting this on earth? (laughs) Yeah. She's like, I know I'm going to get the blame. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. You're going to get the blame. (laughs) Well, you know what they say? If it's got uh, if it's got, is it three leaves? I don't know what uh, they're saying. It sounds like you don't either. It's like, if it's three, it's those three triangular leaves. I think that's poison ivy. And then if it's four, it's poison oak. Or so. I, I, I thought if it was four, I thought if it was four, it was good luck. That's with clovers. That's a different thing. That's uh, luck of the Irish. It's a, I've never found a four leaf clover, by the way. I, I'm not convinced that they really exist. No, but I, 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 I found many four leaf clovers in my day. Have you? Yeah. How do you, yeah, we how used do you... to. I don't know how, but like when I was younger, like we, me, that was something me and my, me and my pa did. Me and my pops, we had a lot of clover in our, in our in our yard and we would frequently kind of just go out there and look for one. Uh, I think it was just something he tried to do to like connect me to outside. I don't know. It obviously but, like, worked you know, well. <laughs> he, he would always be like, you know, I challenging me basically to find a four leaf clover who could find the first one or something like that. And, and yeah. yeah, no, we, we found, uh, I, I found probably a handful of them in my time. You're not that big into nature, are you? No, no, I'm not. You're not a big outdoorsy kind of guy. I mean, as I get older, I appreciate it more, but like not to the point where I want to go look for four leaf clovers. Really, if I have a kid someday, maybe me and maybe me and him will go look for a four leaf clover so I can feel connected to my Paul. But you outside and of that, no. Yeah, and like I remember, there was like uh, I guess you could take like these long like onion stems or uh, basically long. I don't even know if they're onion stems, just long weed. And there's like little grub holes you could stick stick them in. You could catch a, a worm. Oh, you yeah. ever done that before? No, no, I never heard of that. <laughs> I don't know if they're little grub worms or what, but basically you go fishing, and if you stuck it in there, like a worm would eventually bite, and you could pull it up, and it'd be like a little caterpillar type of worm. That was kind of cool. The only grub worm I was familiar was the one I saw when I showered. I played a lot of Earthworm Gem on Sega when I was younger. I don't know if you ever played that game or not, but that was another worm I was familiar with. I remember those earthworms that, like, when it would rain, they would come up and, like for whatever reason they come out of the ground you know and die i think they come up and then they they like dry out and die you ever see like a dried out earthworm sure he got too much sun (laughs) sure i mean we use those for fishing but yeah when i was younger i would take all those worms and throw them on the concrete and like let the sun bake them i was kind of mean that way i wouldn't kill them i would just let the nature run its course i feel like the earthworm is the the pasty white 
American of society that, you know, you know, the people that are like, like ginger people that have all the freckles and they go out and they get sunburned too easily. And if they don't wear sunscreen, they'll, they'll burn to death. That that's, that's the earthworm. Either the earthworm or the slug. Yeah. Oh no, I got too much salt on me. I'm dead. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're really not um, engineered for, for life. If salt kills you. Well, then again, I mean, salt kills us too, just at a higher level. But But that, that's my only experience with nature as a kid that I can think of outside of like my farm animals and farm (laughs) stuff. But I found I some full-length clovers before. I, I think it's good for the soul. There's something about being out in nature that I love. I mean, not, not to sound like a hippie, but it just, uh, there's something to it. Like, we are connected somehow in some way to the planet. I, I really believe that. That's fine and dandy, and I'm not disagreeing. And like I said, the older I get, the more I appreciate nature and kind of sitting outside on a cool breeze. Whatever. I, I get all that. I like a rocking chair and a swing as much as anybody. I would like to have a good hammock. But I don't know. I used to work out in it so much that I was like, I want to be inside. I like air condition. Yeah, that's nice too, especially in the in the heat of the summer. It got a little yeah. hot down here yesterday. It was up over eighty yesterday, so I'm starting to get a little taste of that Texas heat. I mean, I know not even not even really not yet, but I mean, over eighty is pretty. You know, it's getting there. It's getting warm. So it's it's sixty seven and kind of perfect here today. Oh, nice, it's a, nice. But but it's supposed to get up to like seventy eight. So like it's yeah. kind of it's, it's kind of perfect here today. I have a hoodie on because you know I just it's too cold in the morning to go out in short sleeves because it's like forty degrees. But yeah, it's yeah, supposed I'm, to get warm later. I'm in a hoodie too because when I wake up in this room, this air conditioner, you know, I sleep cold, so I wake up cold. Even though I got blankets on me and stuff, I gotta I'm, I'm, my body's like cold early in the day till till I get my coffee in me, of course, which I'm almost done with this cup, first cup of the day. My uh, Black Rifle Coffee, I don't know if you've seen, but they're under fire right now from the uh, Patriots of America. (laughs) They're mad at Black Rifle Coffee. What has Black Rifle Coffee done? Well, I think people are calling them like kind of grifters and stuff because they... They're not actually... Because like when when I think of Black Rifle Coffee and A, I'm not a coffee drinker. B, I don't really pay attention too much to the culture wars and know exactly all the ins and outs of these things. But in my mind, my perception of Black Rifle Coffee is that they are big-time patriots. They love the Second Amendment. They love yeah. Donald Trump. They love Republicans, and they want yeah, just freedom, freedom, freedom. Well, that's kind of what people thought about them. And then there's been some information surface, I guess, where they had donated to like some Democratic – political organizations and uh the the right wingers online are not happy about it they are not happy so they're looking for alternatives to switch their coffee which i i like black rifle coffee because i just think it's a good product you know and like my what ever happened to just folgers whatever happened to just the best part of waking up was folgers in your cup they had a good slogan they had good commercials i don't know if the coffee was good I like smelling it when Paul made it back in the day. He'd always get him a cup of Folgers and get it going in the machine. Whatever happened to Folgers? Why do we need all this extra stuff? The best part of waking up, Folgers in your cup. There's nothing wrong with Folgers. I mean, I grew up on Folgers, too. You know, and most people drink some Folgers at some point in their life. It's it's a fine product. It's old school Folgers, you know, but it, it like... I don't know. There, there's so many options now, and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to try and, like... But I just look for a good product. I mean, my my whole thing, like, I don't, I've told you before, I don't care what a company stands for. Like, if if I like the product, I'm going to consume it. You know, what are Folger's political beliefs? I don't know. That's the point. You don't know because we didn't used to talk about all this and have to take a stand on everything. Now, look, I'm not going to feel bad for Black Rifle Coffee because they definitely either help perpetrate or at least didn't stop. (laughs) the thoughts that they were some, you know, freedom fighters and, and patriots. So like <coughs> they're kind of reaping what they sow in terms of their cancellation if they actually get canceled. But I don't need my corporations to have big political statements. I like, you know I was gonna say genocide, but hell I don't even really care about what they say about Israel and Palestine, honestly. Like when it comes to 
my my companies. Yeah, I have my personal beliefs, but like I don't necessarily need my companies to come out and take a stand one way or the other. What are your personal know, beliefs on Israel we, and Palestine? <laughs> we we all know which side the uh, the corporations are going to fall on. We all know which side the corporations are going to going to support. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta it, keep it's that ru- money rolling in. <laughs> yeah, it's ruined my it's ruined my Scream movie franchise. I, I'm now having some worries about it because it's become a victim <clears throat> of Palestine Israel. Yeah. One of the yeah. things I like more than anything in in the world is my my scream movie franchise, and now, you know, they've had to redo the whole the whole story. Directors have been fired, actresses have been fired, and they're having to rip it up and start over because the main character from the reboot said, you know, basically she's Team Palestine. Oh, and and she made the movie executives mad, and they and then she wouldn't apologize. She wouldn't back off, so they fired her. Oh, you're you're telling me that the movie executives in Hollywood are not pro Palestine, huh? Correct. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I think Kanye West said something similar to that. But anyways, I don't need my corporations <laughs> to make statements because we kind of usually can know what uh, where they're going to side. We, we kind of know, yeah. uh, you know, where what where they're going to fill, and that's fine as long as they're not like helping with sex trafficking. That's really like where I draw the line. Are we are we helping fund sex trafficking? Well, I mean, you know, you might draw the line there, but like, there's plenty of information out there on Apple and how they have those like <laughs> extremely terrible working conditions in the, the the cobalt mines or whatever in the Congo. Yeah. Like, yeah, but they're not keeping people like chained up and selling them for sex. They're just saying, hey, here's here's. If you want to make some money, if you want to work, if you want to be, you know, alive, here you go. It's not the same as sex as sex trafficking. And also, the sex trafficking probably needs to be in America for me to really care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's overseas, it's not really happening. That's none of my business. <laughs> That's none of my concern. I don't go overseas. I'm a patriot like that. Country first. That's what I think. That's well, what that's, it means to be a true patriot is country first. So do I want these corporations to be evil overseas? No, I don't. Do I want people to have good work environments overseas and in different countries? Sure, I do. Am I willing to take a stand over it? No, not really. Not really. <laughs> not really. Yeah, now, if the like, sex trafficking was in America, yes, we have a different story. It's like when the whole thing happened with Bud Light. You know, I mean, I like Bud Light, so it never phased me. I mean, I don't really care. You know, it, it, it's just, if I like a product, I like a product. It doesn't mean that much to me what they stand for. I don't. Uh, Have I you don't... ever boycotted anybody or anything over something other than their, the quality of their, their stuff? Um, price. The, the only thing, the only way I'll boycott a company is if the prices get too ridiculous. You so know, like, like who? Uh, five guys might be a good example their their prices are out of control and they've always had a good burger and but you know the the economy they, they've done the same thing every other restaurant has done they've raised their prices but the problem for five guys raising their prices is like now you go in you want to get a cheeseburger and fries at five guys it's like i, I mean who's who's going to pay 22 dollars for that there's plenty of other decent burgers out there for less and they do yeah, have they- a good burger but you know. They had nowhere to go. They were already expensive. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And like maybe when, you know, they were expensive eight years ago, maybe at $15, but you could kind of justify that a little more. Now they, like you said, they have nowhere to go. I found a nice uh, burger place here. I guess it's just a local chain to uh, Texas maybe, but it's called P. Terry's. And they've got a, you can get out of there for other, under 10 bucks for double cheeseburger and fries comes out to like nine and some change which i think good and, yeah and it's a whole combo it's a double plenty of fries you get a drink with it and in today's economy that's i mean the, anything under 10 bucks is is a steal so yeah if i can get a good lunch under 10 bucks or even like right at 10 bucks then yeah i'm gonna have you in my rotation that's that's pretty yeah. much my max of where i'm gonna spend for lunch like my Chick Fil A comes out to basically ten fifty. My Jersey Mike's comes out to ten fifty after a tip. My my Chipotle three pointer comes out to like eight fifty. That that's where I'm going to be at for lunch. So I, yeah. yeah, the pricing thing I think is fair, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. 
Yeah, I just I, didn't I, know if you had ever canceled something for somebody's beliefs or or nah. something they've said or or anything like that. No, no. I mean, it's like you know, Bud Light is one end of the spectrum, and then Chick Fil A is kind of like the other end. You know, people used to criticize them for their they're they're too big on Jesus or whatever, and like I, I don't care. I mean, if if I want some chicken nuggets and I'm there's a Chick Fil A in the area and I'm hungry, I'm going there. So I, I don't care too much about all that stuff. But my my only big thing is uh, I, I boycott restaurants that have an and symbol in the middle, like uh, what do they call it? Like an ampersand? You know what I'm talking about? The the and sign. I know what the hell an ampersand is. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, if you got an ampersand in the middle, if your restaurant name is like knife and fork or, you know, salt and flour or, you know, what was that? There was something called the boy and the bear or some shit like those were everywhere in California. I, I wait, never, wait, 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 wait. You, you never want to eat at a place like that. But what if it just is and what if it's the boy and the bear and it's and yeah, you never want to eat at a place like that. Don't people like like here locally? Is it Sam and Andy's a big a big popular place here? Do they use an ampersand or do they spell well, out? That's what A-N-D? I'm asking. Well, that's what I'm asking. Is it and or is it just a symbol? Well, if they spell out A-N-D, I might give them a chance. But if it's an ampersand, chances are it's going to be overpriced and the workers are not going to care. You know, it's going to be a lot of workers with tattoos and like uh, extremely liberal beliefs. And uh, just, <laughs> what about, I, just, I don't know. What about N apostrophe? That's okay. That's okay. I was going to say, I know you love you some some steak and shake. I've actually never eaten at steak and shake. I know you don't probably don't believe that, but I I've never been to a steak and shake. Well, years ago, you corrected me that they no longer had chicken tenders. How the hell did you know that? Oh, no, no. Wait a second. I was thinking of Shake Shack. No, I've definitely been to Steak and Shake. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, you're right. definitely, you yeah. seem like a Steak and Shake. My whole world was about to be turned upside down. No, I, I definitely have been to Steak and Shake. For some reason, when you said that, I was thinking about Shake Shack, and I've never we been We get to it. Shake. You're a West Coast guy now. We get it. We get it. A West Coast guy? What are you talking about? Isn't Shake Shack like a West Coast thing? I don't think so. You, are you thinking of In-N-Out? Well, no, I, I know In-N-Out is too, but I thought I thought Shake Shack was like a West Coast thing too. Oh, I don't know, but I've never been to one. So we don't have any one. Shake Shacks like in Knoxville. Yeah, you do. Where? There's a Shake Shack in Knoxville. Where? I'm not sure, but I think uh, I'm pretty sure there's one there. Or maybe How do you? There's one in Nashville, I know for a fact. Well, Nashville doesn't count. Nashville gets some of that liberal magic. They get the big city stuff. They they get some of the stuff the West Coast people get. I'm not sure Shake Shack is like liberal magic. I think it's just a it's just a look, burger joint. I mean, I don't let me look here. Shake Shack. I don't think Shake Shack is supposed to be like uh, some kind of frou frou type operation. I mean, it's it's just a regular place, isn't it? Like, don't they have Shake Shacks all over the place? They're, they're pretty common. It's not like a California trendsetter restaurant. There are a lot of those in California, though. Places and most of those places, they're they're just overpriced, and they got like vegan options. You know, I, don't, I, don't I guess really Sh- know. Shake Shack is New York, so I guess maybe calling it West Coast isn't right. Yeah, West Coast is In and Out. We we have In and Out here too in Texas, but I think In and Out's pretty overrated, to be honest with you. I mean, they they got a decent burger, but I'm not real big on their cheese. And if if their bun's not toasted properly, sometimes it's kind of plasticky, and the fries suck. I mean, the the best thing about In and Out, I mean, the beef is good. They got good beef, but otherwise, it's it's not my favorite burger restaurant. They got a lot of Water Burgers around here, and I do like Water Burger because, and I tell you why, is because the Water Burger burger is what Sonic used to be before Sonic went all crazy with their bun. The the sonic quality is not what it used to be back in circa 2006, 2007, 2008. At some point in the game, Sonic changed their bun. And the Sonic burger, you know, it has this reputation as being like everybody's favorite fast food burger. Oh, what? What? People love Sonic burgers. Sonic has the reputation for having everyone's favorite burger. Is that is that accurate? 
Well, there's there's levels to burgers, you know. I mean, we've. I've it, never it, heard it, any. I don't think I've heard anyone say that Sonic has their favorite burger. I'm just saying Sonic's better than like a Wendy's or Burger King burger. Like what? The, like you're the, taking the Sonic burger over the the Dave's Double. Yeah, probably, but not really anymore because, like I said, they changed. You're their taking. Mind. You're taking. You're back in the day. You're taking the Sonic burger over the quarter pounder. Yeah. Over yeah. the steak burger from Steak and Shake, uh, maybe over That's just a, a uh, just a wi- just over a crystal with cheese. Oh come on, that's not a burger. That you might as well eat dog shit. The thick burger from Hardee's or whatever. The Whopper from I don't know. I don't like Whoppers really, but the, the uh, monster thick burger. You you just throwing out all casually that everyone agrees that Sonic has the best burger is throwing me for a loop. Well, I feel like it wins those YouTube taste tests and stuff usually, <laughs> like the the blind taste test or whatever. I, I don't know. I mean, what I'm saying might not so be accurate. So one man's palate, it wins, it, it, one man thought it was the best? What I'm saying might not be accurate, but I'm telling you 15 years ago, Sonic was my favorite burger on, on that level, like better than Burger King, Wendy's, th- that level of burger, which I classify certain burgers on different levels like sure you're not shack, putting it up against you're not putting it up against five guys I, I get what you're saying yeah but but my whole point is that to me a whataburger burger is what a sonic burger used to be it's got the same kind of bread on the bun and it's the, it's good you know fast food meat quality that's it's just it's it's better it's a sonic burger but better why so the I'm, hell are you talking so much about fast food well, I don't know. I don't mean. I was to... just asking you if you had ever boycotted something. Well, and then my next answer... thing I know, you've talked to me about burgers for ten goddamn minutes. My, Why? My... <laughs> my answer to that is just never eat at a restaurant with an ampersand. If it's like two, wor- if it... you know what I'm talking about, they've it's always some kind of vegan bullshit. That's it's like fucking. Uh... Well, it, it's like fork and knife. I mean, I know that's a, the example I keep saying, or it's like you know. Uh, it, it I don't think it's the amper. I don't think it's the ampersand you have a problem with. I think you're unfairly talking about the ampersand. I like using a good ampersand. I don't. I don't think of the ampersand as bougie. I think. Of, I think of it as character saving and sometimes character building. I think there are plenty of good places with an ampersand. It's just. Try. It's just interchangeable with the word and. Now, would I eat at a place called knife and a fork? No, I, I would think that place sucked too. It's not the ampersand's fault. F- field and table you know come try no, our- that's a dumbass name but it doesn't matter come if try it's our new lemon hummus burger no it's- you're it's- just you're just rebelling against vague words put together with the word and in it that's what you're or not even vague words you're just you're just mad about simple words being put together with and it has nothing to do with the ampersand hey what's good here Oh, we have a wonderful new chicken sandwich. It has arugula with a honey glaze with chickpea, uh, mashed up mango, pineapple salsa, and a uh, uh, brioche bun. I hate shit like that. I- You're unfairly <laughs> blaming the ampersand for the culture. If the place was called Jack and Diane's, and Jack and Diane was a 70-year-old couple, and Diane would- was up there cooking biscuits <laughs> and gravy, but she yeah. uses the ampersand, you wouldn't feel that way. Jack and Diane's would be serving some good all-American classic food. There wouldn't be any hummus. There, there wouldn't be Again, any bullshit. You're, you're blaming the culture. If they use the ampersand, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think anything different. You'd be like, "Oh, Jack and Diane's. That's cute. Nice logo." We have steel-cut potatoes with tzatziki, and uh, oh, do you have just ketchup? Well, we have a garlic-based, uh, you know, parsley and uh, tomato puree. I just hate all that type of stuff that vegan options and tofu burger and all that. Give me just some regular, you know, good classic American food. That's a, you know, you know what restaurant I like? I like, I like a restaurant called Tom's, you know, Dave's Gino's something like that. That's what I like out of my restaurant. Just a regular man's name. That's a good place. When you said Gino's, it reminded me of the restaurant I wanted to open. What were you going to call it? Gino's? Gino's. <laughs> were you going to serve up like Italian? No, uh, no, it was Gino's, <laughs> but it was it was G N O. I'm just saying, if you can go, the to G a- stood for good guys or great, or I mean, great, uh, good. Wait, no, it was either guys, girls, or great. I haven't decided. I think it was. I was going to let it, you know be whatever you wanted to call it. Oh, okay. 
It's weird. So it was like, great night out. Let's go to Geno's. Geno's. Mm -hmm. For a girls and guys, great night out. There's only one place to go in this town. Gino's. You gotta go to Geno's. Geno's. You gotta go to Geno's. We got burgers and steaks. Hamburgers too. Something, something, something. Just round up your crew. You gotta go to Geno's. Yeah, sure. I already had a commercial written and everything. It's like if there's you got two pizza places to choose from, and one of them is is called uh, Vinny's, but then and then the other one is called you know Oil and Paste. We get uh, it. You hate the hipster culture that you've been indoctrinated <laughs> in. We get it. No, none of us live in this place unless you live in Nashville or Los Angeles. You no, uh, that's not true. You got that in Knoxville too. You got hipster culture in Knoxville. I go mean, down. a little bit. I don't go to that side of town. All you got to do is cross the river, Severe Avenue. That's where it's I just, at. I just said I don't go to that side of town. Now, the one thing I'll give the hipsters, I hate the aesthetic, but they usually have pretty good coffee. The hipsters do a pretty good job with their little coffee shops. Which is funny to me because it's just coffee. It's not just coffee. It's never just coffee. R. Kelly was my answer. What about R. Kelly? That was my answer. I, I've boycotted R. Kelly. Did he I have a restaurant? Stand. No, no, I just couldn't. I, I don't. I don't listen to his music anymore. I, I've I've boycotted R. Kelly. So if the remix to Ignition comes on, you 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 don't participate. I'm hitting next if I'm in control of the of the thing. But if you're not in control and everybody else is having a good time, are you bobbing your head just a little? Depends who I'm with. If I'm with people I know, I just repeatedly scream canceled. <laughs> if I'm out in public, I don't draw attention to myself. But no, I don't. I don't pretend like I'm rubbing my hands through my fro. I don't, I don't do that. I don't bounce, bounce, bounce. None of that. None of that. If I'm so, with people I know, I just, I just loudly keep saying canceled, canceled, get it off. That way people know where I stand. Separate the art from the artist. I just loudly start booing and put my thumb down. But he might be one of the only ones. But you I have still, canceled him. You still listen to Bill Cosby jokes? No, but I didn't listen to Bill Cosby jokes anyways. Like Bill Cosby was never really a part of my life. I like the movie Jack with Robin Williams, where he's like the, the little 10-year-old boy inside of Robin Williams' grown body. And, you know, his mom's Diane Lane. And his teacher, Jennifer, is Jennifer Lopez. And, like, me as, like, a 10-year-old boy was very horny during that movie because I love Diane Lane and Jennifer Lopez. That was really my only run-in with Bill Cosby. You know, the worst thing about Bill Cosby, really, when you think about it, is the hypocrisy of, you know, preaching all this stuff about how Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock and the young black comedians were using foul language and uh, you don't have to... You don't have to work blue to be funny. You can do clean comedy like me. I mean, meanwhile, this guy's out there, you know, doing what he was doing to people. You can't, I've heard you can't say the R word on like, or we'll get taken down from YouTube. I saw that in the other podcast. Like if you say that word, like they'll take really? you off YouTube. Really? Yeah. That's why now when you listen to some of like the big podcasts, they bleep out certain words. Have you noticed that? Um, no, because I don't really listen to anything too vulgar. Oh, okay. I was trying to I mean, say... I, I don't mean that, like, as, you know, anything in, in terms of me being, you know, too good to listen to something vulgar. Since I don't listen to a lot of comedy podcasts. I typically will, like, bleep Seth out if he says... The other R word? <laughs> yeah, the other R word. But that's that mostly one's, just... That one's coming back. Yeah, I don't know if that's like on YouTube's algorithm or not. I don't upload it on YouTube or whatever, and I've never gotten in trouble on like Spotify for it. But it's just, it's one of those that makes you cringe now. I feel like that R word's making a comeback though with Shane Gillis, uh, kind Maybe. of re reaching prominence. Oh, speaking of YouTube though, did you see where Joke World commented on our last podcast episode? I did see that, and some other people have pointed it out to me. You pointed it out to me. I got a listener that DM'd it to me. I got the notification. I got to be honest, I'm not into the YouTube comedy scene. I didn't know who Joke World was. But apparently this is a pretty big deal. 
Yeah, yeah. Which I don't know if that means they were listening to our podcast, but they they just commented on it. But that would be kind of cool, though, if like if that account started really liking us for some reason and then started sharing our stuff, because I think we would gain some traction. Well, yeah, no, it would be nice once you told me who it was. And, you know, some people like, no, they post really funny stuff. I don't know if our last couple episodes have been too funny, though. So they might listen and be like, oh, these guys are just whining about their living situation. This guy's going to kill himself. This isn't funny. I don't think every podcast has to be like hilarious, though. I, th- I think people like just listening to people talking, you know? Oh, no, I-, I agree. But I don't I don't know about like random strangers coming in, listening to people talking. Like, I don't know how people feel when they just check out a random podcast, unless it's about a topic that they like. Very rarely have I ever just listened to a completely random podcast. Is that something you do? Uh, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm with you there. If it's just okay. two guys, two guys I've never heard of, I'm probably not, probably not giving it a chance, but yeah, I, th- there's one podcast that made it into my daily. Like I listen to it, not daily, but I listen to it a lot, but it's just a, it was a wrestling podcast and I just kind of stumbled upon it and decided to listen and I liked it and I keep listening to it. But like, as far as comedy or really even just like sports, unless I know the person, <laughs> I don't typically just tune into random people. That Bill Cosby thing made me think of the, uh, I mean, obviously I was trying to set you up for the, the Norm, Norm McDonald joke, you know, when he was in the car with Jerry Seinfeld. But it made me think of the other Norm joke that I remembered with uh, Artie Lang. Are you familiar with that one? You can say it. I don't know if I'm familiar with it just off of that setup. Well, hopefully they won't pull us off of YouTube for me saying it, but surely they won't. But anyway, if they do, then this episode will be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But um, Artie Lang had had done like a stand-up show somewhere. You know, him and Norm were good friends. And Artie had done a stand-up show somewhere, and I guess he bombed, and it wasn't a good show. And so a newspaper reviewer wrote in the newspaper his his. He, his critique of it was like, he said, Artie Lang was as charming as a date rapist in his, uh, in his weekend set at so-and-so club. And I guess, uh, Artie told Norm about it. And Norm said, uh, well, you know, Artie, at least they said you had all the charm of a date rapist. That's better than a regular rapist. At least a date rapist. You got to have some charm about you to get them to go on a date. <laughs> That is a good point, my Norm. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, RIP. Yeah, he'll, he'll pop up in my algorithm every now and then on either Instagram or TikTok. And him saying that with Conan O'Brien, I, it was kind of crazy knowing that this was a joke on TV on, like, a, a decently popular show. I mean, I know Conan was late, late night. But, like, he was talking about Michael Jackson and, and naming his kids. You ever seen that one? Yeah, I've seen it. I can't remember the the entire he he goes through the whole thing about michael jackson's kids and like if he has a daughter he's gonna name it whatever it was it's like and if it's a boy he's gonna have sex with him (laughs) and Conan o'brien just like sits there (laughs) and like covers his face is like of course you're putting the camera on me now get the camera like basically get the camera off me i didn't say it meanwhile norm just sits there norm had a, a brilliant mind too the the whole uh, the roast of Bob Saget is one of my favorites when like everybody just figured out that the whole point of it was to not be he was not funny like that was Norm's whole <laughs> like the roast of Bob Saget is I mean it's legendary because it, it kind of it takes a minute for people to figure out what he's doing you know they're like is he just is he bombing and then they're like oh he's he's saying Bob Saget's not funny. Yeah, I saw Andy Samberg do – he not really copy that. He kind of did like a – when he was on the roast, so I guess Jonah Hill, he just did nothing but compliments. Oh, yeah. Like he didn't <laughs> roast. It's like Aziz Ansari, man, like his parents are from India, and, and he grew up in rural South Carolina. Look at this guy. He's got a really unique perspective on the American experience. What a piece of shit. <laughs> And they're all laughing. He just good. gives compliments to yeah. He just gives compliments to everybody. I got a problem with uh, Walmart. You got beef with Walmart? I don't know if you've been in a Walmart recently, but they're doing this thing where they're honestly, they're... honestly, I think I've been to Walmart maybe two times in like the last like honestly like six years. 
Oh yeah, really? I don't go to Walmart. I don't go to Walmart pretty much ever. That's I run to Target. Yeah, I run to Target or like a grocery store. Like Target or Kroger is pretty much Target, Kroger, or online is is where I'm pretty much uh, staying most days. Well, it's funny you mentioned Target because that's what I've noticed about Walmart recently is they're like they're mapping out their stores. I guess kind of their smaller stores to be like targets. They're they're like copying targets entire and I know this because of all those targets I went to in LA when I had my grocery delivery job that I got fired from. That like it's just the way that the store is set up. And I went to Walmart the other day, and I'm like, whoa, they're just completely copying Target store setup. It makes sense as to why you got fired as you were just walking around Target admiring the layout and noticing <laughs> yes. how they had their whole store set up. Yeah. Let me run through here and see if I can get some candles. Well, when you pick up things for people, you have to figure out what sections are, you know, like uh, the the baby sections over here, the, the hair and makeup sections over here. You got because people ordered all kinds of weird stuff, you know. But why were people just not ordering online and then just having you pick up the online order? <laughs> there's just different services you can use some of them somebody actually goes and shops for you that one seems dumb like well walmart and target will just get the stuff for you i don't know and and you can go to the front and get it and be like i'm picking up for so and so and they can put it in the notes that yeah this guy named cody is getting ready to pick up my stuff give it to him like that seems dumb and you know tough to go in and shop for people Shopping is one of my least favorite things. Having to go to the store and have a list of things I need, especially like when my ex-girlfriend would always ask me to go to the grocery store with her. She'd give me a big, long list of things. I'm like, you've got to tell me where it's at. Like, yeah. you got you to gotta give me an idea of where it's at. I don't want to wander around aimlessly. But the Kroger app would be like aisle seven. Home Depot would be like, it's in Bay 34. I would be like, okay, I can do that. I'll find it there. I don't want to wander around the store. But shopping for someone seems like one of the worst things ever. Well, Target did that. Like some of their aisles are, their aisles are usually numbered. And so you could kind of break it down to what people were like a good order would be all food stuff. Cause you could find that and figure it out pretty quick and get it all in your cart. And like you stay in one area of the store, but like sometimes they'd order such random stuff. Like they'd need like these random wall hooks that are located on the other side of the store in the hardware section. And it's like, you you don't really know what you're looking for. So it it could be a pain in the ass, but that, that, that reminds me of my mom when she sends my stepdad to the store, he always comes back with the wrong stuff. And she, she gets so mad at him because, you know, she'll want one thing, but not specify it. And he'll just pick up the closest thing to that. Even if it's not the right thing. It's, you know, she'll need like flour, like self rising flour or something. He'll come back and, ah, couldn't get that, but they got baking powder. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> that, that could be a part of your joke. You can work that into your set somehow. And instead of him coming back with baking powder, he comes back with a, uh, with a dozen roses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's nice. <laughs> she wants flour. He comes back. He's got the dozen roses. Walmart does that. They have a grab and go section now. It's like the stuff that they just put, they used to just put it up by the, the register, you know, when you actually checked out like candy bars and uh, cold drinks and stuff like that. Now that now it's just a section. It says grab and go. Doesn't even say anything about paying. Just says grab and go. <laughs> just walk right out with it. Yeah. Hey, the, the no big I, deal. I walked through the door and the, the siren started going off. I said, what's the problem? Your sign said, grab and go. Hilarious. Try it. They're not supposed to chase you at Walmart. It'll be fun. It doesn't say grab and then pay and then go. It says grab and go. Don't try it at Target, but th- th- they seem like they have the lawyers and the willingness to go and try to pers- uh, prosecute you. But But Walmart, they might just let it slide. They're used to it. It's pretty fascinating when you look at how much money these corporations lose every year to uh, shoplifting. Have you ever looked at those numbers? I've heard about them. I've never looked at them. I know they just write X amount of them off and kind of break, you know, build it into the budget that they know they're going to have the breakage and, you know, just straight up theft. 
that's yeah. the word yeah i was trying to remember what they call it i was thinking like leaking is it leakage yeah. it's breakage but yeah like it's it's <laughs> millions and millions of dollars like a crazy amount of money but you know people need stuff and sometimes they don't have the money to pay for it so what are you gonna do what are you gonna do you don't want them to go the, without i'm in the market for a new vizio and i don't have 500 dollars, so i'm just gonna wheel this thing right out the door those are a little bit easier to rob, I think. I think because, you know, you put it on the cart and you just, you know, you, you have a receipt just in case, but just keep walking. Sounds like you know what you're doing. I'm a big fan of those TCLs, the the Chinese TVs, because they usually yeah. come at a much lower price and they're pretty good quality TV. I mean, it's comparable to a Samsung or Vizio or whatever, and they're, they're always like $200 cheaper. It's just whether or not you want the camera inside of the tv to be watching you inside of your home <laughs> that's true while china spies on you and steals your identity so like if that's if you're okay with that then yeah you can save a couple hundred bucks what do you think about these chinese uh military aged men coming across the border is that is that happening <laughs> i don't know that's what joe rogan said him and dr phil did a podcast that's what they said so it's got to be true so that's one of the things now is like illegal immigration down at the border is, yeah. is, is allowing Chinese spies in. Yeah, it's not so much about the the Mexicans coming in. It's the Chinese that are coming in through the south southern border. And it's military-aged men, guys who are young and fit and in shape. And, you know, I guess, I guess it's got people concerned that they're like Chinese soldiers or something. Well, what the hell are they supposed to do? They're, they're going to bring it enough to... to to do what exactly take on the military from the inside? Like, is, is there a, know. is there a switch they can flip to like allow the, the Chinese government to fly in and not get shot down? Like what exactly are these people supposed to be doing? Creating a sleeper cell of karate masters? Like what is happening here? Be careful. I think they're worried. I think, I think karate and I think ninjas are J Japanese anyways, not Chinese, but you get right. the picture. Right. Yeah. They're not the same people. Okay. They're, they're different. Samurais? Are, are Chinese actually, people samurais? I'm pretty sure they actually don't like each other. But, no, they um, don't. They don't. They hate each other. <laughs> yeah. Which ones are better? The <laughs> Which ones are better? <laughs> because isn't like Japan, aren't they kind of the upper class? Like, don't they kind of look down on Chinese people? You know, honestly, I can't. I, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be a, an expert on Asian politics, but my understanding is that this goes back to, you know, even before World War II, obviously, but, like, Japan was a power and probably looked really far down on China at that time. Now, you know, fast forward 80 years, and it seems like China has, has you know, pulled ahead in terms of world power rankings, but I do know they don't really like each other. I bet, Or at least I, I know that's the perception. They're probably still mad about Nanking. I don't understand that joke. That's not a joke. It's a very uh, poignant historical reference. I don't understand that reference. Google Nan King, and you can read about the horrors that happened. Then, yeah, probably. What is that? Because when you start talking about it, I, I, it sounds like something I've heard about. What is that? Well, uh, again, to not to make the theme of this episode the R word, but there was a whole lot of uh, R-ing and yeah, a whole lot pillaging. of... Uh, pillaging yeah it was pretty pretty bad from from his most historical accounts but i don't know you could ask dr phil he could tell you more about it he's a socio-political analyst now so he <laughs> i guess dr phil is is uh in the know i wait for the crossover between him and uh, lou holtz i saw lou holtz announced his new podcast and and oh, sold God. it but what and so, yeah and he sold it by saying no one cares about restoring american culture as much as i do so i guess he's going to be a new a, a new warrior a new activist oh. in terms of trying to re to make america great again for lack of a better term what a what a hit that's gonna be a lou holtz podcast <laughs> i mean if there's anybody who's capable of good quality uh <laughs> speaking and audio it's lou holtz that's gonna be fascinating we're gonna have to find some clips from that <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll stand by for the first episode, but yeah, I saw him tweet that out last night. Mm. Which I, I got a feeling like Lou's going to be probably you know pretty pretty problematic. 
Oh yeah. A lot a lot of his like coaching career he was borderline problematic on stuff. If you like go back to like the history of like, you know, him him coaching in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. He's going to be doing with, like, uh, you think he's going to be strong on the border? <laughs> yeah. I, his I, his I, first episode's going to be titled Shally Schmuggles She Shells in Through the Southern Border. <laughs> I will probably shell. give it, I will probably give it a listen though. Yeah. I mean, it'd be pretty uh, captivating. I think. I don't know I if think. Joke World will find it and comment on it. The comment said that he liked our, our, our title of our podcast, our show name. Well, there you go. It's a great show name. Doesn't That's what he that, said. Doesn't that give you some uh, some reassurance that this is a, a good podcast name now? Because, you know, at first we were like, oh, what should we name it? You know, I'm like, I don't know. It could be at, anything. At first I was thinking, is this person being sarcastic? Are they accusing us of stealing someone else's podcast name? Because I ran a search trying to find out if anybody had used this name before. And nothing came up, so I assumed we were in the clear. But then whenever I saw that comment, I was wondering if someone was looking for their own podcast and discovered this one and was accusing us of ripping it off, or if this just randomly hopped into their feed and they're like, oh, wow, great name. I Is also, their gimmick? Uh, Do they just go around, like, listening to comedy YouTube podcasts, trying to discover people and trying to just, like, you know, grow their brand? Because, hey, if I comment on all these things, they'll give me a like and subscription myself. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what their model is, but they're I just know they're big in that world. So okay. I don't, I don't know. Well, what was your beef with Walmart? You never finished the story. Oh, just that they're trying to look like targets now. Oh well, why do you care? I don't know. I just I don't I think they should do their own thing. <laughs> why why do you take that personally? <laughs> why are you personally why are you personally offended that they're trying to look like Target? Why do you care? That's from, well, they're from my home state, you know, I'm a shareholder for one thing. And, uh, <laughs> it's, I, I grew up with Walmart. I mean, it's a, that's kind of my, my place as a kid. I don't know where the breakdowns come, but like target feels socially acceptable. Cause you know, the whole, the meme women love going to target and walking around for hours and buying stuff. No one says anybody likes walking around Walmart for hours. When I think of people walking around Walmart for hours, I think of people stealing well, you got to get a lot more steps in to walk around Walmart. I mean, those super centers are pretty good sized places, but that's a good place to get your walking in though. If it's raining outside and you don't want to go to the gym, just go walk around Walmart. Not I, here, not in Knoxville. You go to West town mall. I really did used to be a shareholder and you know, since then those shares have split and doubled and like this was back in the early two thousands. I think I had something like 60 shares of Walmart. So uh, I'm kind of a, a big deal in that I own part of Walmart, but I think my granddad sold off my shares or I don't know exactly what happened. I was supposed to get that money one day and I don't think I ever got it. And I think it'd be worth like four or five, maybe six grand now. So I don't know. I don't know what happened with my Walmart stock. 60 shares of Walmart right now would sell for $3,600. Oh, okay. Minus, minus the taxes and such. Okay, well, that'd be a pretty good chunk of change. I mean, I could use that that money right now, you know. But is your I, is your grandpa still alive? No, no, he's dead. But oh, but I don't know what happened to my shares. It's like, are they you still need to floating ask your around mom. out there? You need to ask your ma. Stay maybe on I top should, of this. Maybe I should go to the headquarters, demand to see the Walton family. They're too busy fucking up the Broncos. Yeah, but they got the Rams and won a Super Bowl, though. Aaron Rodgers is up for vice president. What do you think about this? Well, I think it pretty much solidifies that RFK is not a serious candidate. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, is he just throwing? Is he just throwing his biggest supporter a bone because he's kind of the only celebrity? that I've ever seen, like, really say he likes RFK. Like, Rogers always talks about how that's his boy. Well, you know, it's a real shame, too, because he has absolutely zero chance of winning. And, like, when you look at the other two options, RFK probably would make the best president. Like, whether you – I mean, I don't know much about his policies and stuff, but I just know that he's a Kennedy and he's not 80. So <laughs> I've seen him do push-ups recently. Like, he had that whole video where he was working out and bench pressing and stuff. Like – he seems more physically fit and more uh, fit of mind, especially compared to Biden. So, I mean, 
Yeah, well, I don't know what his policies are either, but it does seem like he would be the best of the three. Why even run as an independent, though? Like, you just – you have no chance. Is, is it just because, like – does a guy like him just kind of have fuck you money? And so he's just, this is what I'm doing right now. Is it like Connor in succession? Like, because there's no chance that he could win. Literally zero chance. It might be Connor from succession mixed in with Kendall from succession, where he feels like it's his birthright. You know how <laughs> Kendall thought that it was his birthright to take over the company? Maybe RFK thinks it's his birthright being named Kennedy, that he has to be a successful politician. I don't know how successful, like if, if, I, if, I mean, I think you got to respect RFK if for nothing else, just putting himself out there. You know, if my last name was Kennedy and I was in politics, I'd be living in a cave somewhere just given the family history. So, I mean, he, he's obviously got balls to even be running. Yeah, that's a good point. They're not exactly Maybe. a long-term uh, success, you know? <laughs> yeah, but the last names still matter, so putting himself out there is better than not. You know, like we talked about the royal family on, on Monday and how we didn't think what they were doing was for publicity just because they don't need publicity. They don't benefit from, publici pu from publicity. I don't feel the same way about uh, Kennedy. I do think the Kennedy name needs to stay out there, stay involved, stay in the mix. Kind of like Jeb Bush. It's not that different than Jeb Bush running for president because, hey, my daddy was president. Hey, my older brother was president. Well, I'm going to run too. I got to be it careful go well talking for him about either. The, gotta be careful talking about the Bush family here. You know, people are big on Bush down here. I'm in oh. I'm in Bush country. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's that other Kennedy in Louisiana. You know, you know the one that's like he's got the real southern like old school plantation owner accent. I got to be honest, I have no clue who you're talking about. I can't remember his name. I just know his name's Kennedy. He was like a senator or something from Louisiana. No clue. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, it's no clue. Not really important. But uh, I went what, was to, he uh, the one that was linked to the the return of the dead Kennedy? They thought people, you know, like that was the whole thing that it, he was going to come down in 2020 or come down and announce that he was going to run with Trump as vice president <laughs> and all that. Like, was oh my god, I forgot all about that. That might have been the wildest of the right wing conspiracy theories. Like the people actually showed up in Dallas and were, were either of these connected to either of these Kennedys? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Disregard. I don't have enough information on it. I remember the stone show was going on in Dallas that day though. Like it had something to do with it. They were worried about like security and stuff because of this, all these people gathered at the, the plaza waiting on the, uh, the dissension from heaven or whatever is really wild stuff. But people here have a little bit of a tendency to, you know, it's, it's not far from Waco either. So like people can be sucked into some ideas down here on that day. There was an old man returned from the dead. It was just, just Keith Richards after he was shot back to life. That's uh, yeah. That, that was the joke that, yeah. 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 Oh, did people say that? Yeah. Oh, did you just come up? With, yeah. Oh yeah. Obviously I mean, you didn't I, just Google it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't Google it. I just assumed that was an easy joke. Never mind. I think I did. I do remember seeing something about that. Fair enough. All right, anything else today that's on your mind? Um, well, I went to a mountain the other day, but you probably don't care about that. Um, a mountain in Texas or like on the way to Texas? On the way to, or no, um, it, no, it's here. It's called Mount Bonnell in Austin, but it's not really a mountain because it's like, there's no mountains here. It's just rolling hills, but, you know. Well, that's so what I was like, going to say. Is I, I was actually, I was actually interested in that because I do not think of there being any mountains in Texas. It's just, it's probably maybe the, like the very west of Texas, like maybe I guess. Yeah, like close to New Mexico. Yeah, it's right. probably just like the highest point in uh, the area. I guess, I think it's only like 800 feet or something like that, the elevation. But it's like I don't know. It's got nice views. But I just went up there and walked around. Um, Oh, I did have one other thing though. The um, I read a story, and by read I mean uh, saw a headline that daily weed smokers are twenty five percent more likely to have a heart attack, and forty two percent more likely to have a stroke than non weed smokers. Yeah, it's well, it said people who you know daily weed smokers. So I guess they. Uh, that's a stipulation that you smoke weed every day. 
25% more likely heart attack, 42% more likely to have a stroke. And I saw that on the New York Post, so it's bound to be true. Can you Google how Nate Dog died? I can't really Google right now. Okay, let me Google. See how Everything Nate I'm Dog doing died. is on my phone with this podcast. How did Nate Dog die? Stroke. I, I didn't even know Nate Dog died. He died of a stroke at age 41. Was he at the East Side Motel? I don't know, but, you know, he's the one that told us to smoke weed every day, and he died <clears throat> no. of a stroke. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. What more What more do you need? Uh. I'm pretty good at connecting dots. He told us, smoke weed every day, and he died from multiple strokes at the Got age it. of 41, and you just told me that weed smokers who smoke weed every day are more likely to die of heart attack and stroke. That's what you just said, right? Yeah. That's well, it seems like it fucking checks out, don't it? It seems like the dots connect here. That's all the examples I need. A stroke seems bad. Would would you if you had to pick? Would you take stroke or heart attack? I think I, I might really, go heart attack. I don't really know the difference. I mean, I feel this is I'm not I'm not a medical expert, but I feel like people die more often from heart attacks than they do strokes. Usually, I, when I think of people having strokes, I think of them just you know losing feeling in the side of their body and sometimes becoming a little paralyzed. That's what I think of when I think of strokes. I think you can die from a stroke too. Well, yeah, it's... you can. I just told you Nate dog did. Did you not just hear my story? I said he died of a stroke. Like you yes. can, I just think of it more often with heart attacks. I'm pretty sure. And I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm pretty sure that a stroke is just a heart attack in the brain. Like I'm pretty sure it's like the brain gets blood cut off. Like the arteries are clogged going to the brain as opposed to like the arteries to the heart or something. And this probably doesn't sound very medical at all. Cause I don't know what I'm talking about, but I th I'm pretty sure it has something to do with that. Like the br blood flow to the brain. I, I gotta be honest reading that he's only 41 has bummed me out. Well, you don't smoke weed every day. Good point. So I smoke weed no days. Yeah. So you're good. Okay. I was Nothing to worry about <laughs> having a stroke or a heart attack at age 41 and how scary that is. But so how do true. you explain Snoop Dogg and Willie Nelson? I pass on grass. I, I don't know. If I don't know if Snoop Dogg smokes every day. I feel like he has I, to. I, I kind of think that's just a gimmick. I don't think he's living it all the time. That's his whole brand, though. I know. And he's probably regrets. Well, I, I won't say he regrets it because he makes a lot of money doing it, but He's probably like, you know what? I don't really like weed that much anymore. I'm more of a wine guy now. I just want to <laughs> sip a nice bottle of wine. You think once you get money, like the the weed smoking goes down? No, no. I, I think it's probably the opposite for most people. I'm just saying he's probably tired of it. He's like, it's been 60 years of this. I don't want to smoke weed anymore. I well, I want to enjoy some wine. I wonder if there's a correlation, though, between like money and not smoking weed. It doesn't seem to me like a lot of rich people smoke weed, do they? Like, doesn't it seem like something like for the working class, like regular people smoke weed? I don't know. Do I'm billionaires to think. smoke weed? I'm trying to think, and it's problematic. I need to be careful. But like when you're telling me about like rich people not smoking weed, my mind was going to just a lot of like musicians and athletes, both, both white and black. <laughs> Both white and black, but like most like Hollywood actors, I imagine probably smoke weed. I don't know. Like Leonardo, he's smoking some weed. In my opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't feel, I mean, that confidently about that, but I mean, maybe that's just, I don't know. Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, they're smoking weed. They're lighting up. Will Ferrell's lighting up. Do do black people drink wine? Or is that just a white person thing? Like, I never hear about black people, like, liking wine, I feel like. You must not be really active on Instagram. I feel like LeBron, for years, has been posting about how much he loves wine. Well, LeBron's basically white. How do you figure? Be careful. 
All right, that'll do it for us today. I, I will go on record. I think people of all backgrounds like wine. I don't like wine, but other people do. All people do. Just I'll seems talk like to you a later. White thing to me. Eh. I mean, I guess. I don't like wine though, and I'm white. I'll talk to you later. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I hope that you hear back from your job. <laughs> yeah, it's not looking good, but we'll see. Are you going to be poor out there? Are you going to what's what how much is gas? Oh, dude, gas is so nice. It's like I got gas the other day for like 257. Oh my god. It's a it's a vast difference. I'm paying $2 less per gallon. Now I got a I got a big commute, so I'm I'm still kind of spending <laughs> yeah. too uh, I'm still kind of spending too much on it, but like it's it's such a relief from California though to to be able to fill up for like 34 as opposed to 70. It is funny, though, that you are probably using all that difference traveling <laughs> back and forth to Austin every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What can you do? I, I'm trying hard not to be poor. I just, I got, I got to find some kind of job. If I could just get my Uber going, I'd be okay, but I don't what know. Can, I don't... What can you do? That is the question. Could have stayed yeah. in Tennessee, but whatever. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> We'll talk, uh, I guess, this weekend or Monday. Have a good weekend. Any plans to get up on the stage? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be getting up at some point. But last night I called around. So Monday I went to the mothership, the Joe Rogan's club, to sign up. <clears throat> yeah. But but I didn't get selected. So they only pull up, pull like 16 names. So I'm just going to have to go every Monday for the mothership mic and for Kill Tony. And Sunday, the mothership has an open mic Sunday, too. So... I'll, I'll sign up for those every week and hopefully get pulled at some point. But uh, I didn't get pulled. And then I went to like some bar on Tuesday and I haven't been up since Tuesday because like I, I called around yesterday some places, but the, the festival has everything shut down. Like I called two different clubs yesterday that normally have mics and they're like, yeah, with the South by Southwest, we're, we're holding off till next week. So I might just kind of take it easy this weekend, you know, and then I'll be getting up next week. But yeah, remind me, I'll send like a duo DM. I told you I know a comedian that lives in Austin that does some stuff. I'll try to get you guys connected. Yeah, I can really use a friend. Okay, I'll try to get you connected. <laughs> I don't I know another... him that well. I don't know him that well. I just saw him from the internet, but maybe maybe he'll do you a well, solid. I had another guy uh, DM. Me. Well, you know Evan. He's a, he's a friend of the show or friend yeah. of the, we used to work at hops together. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he was, he DM me about, a he's got a friend down here. Maybe I could connect with him, but it would be nice to have just somebody to talk to, you know, that'd, that'd be cool. But, um, just, you know, friends, I feel like that you, you remember the meme, the forever alone guy, the big rock face back in like 2010, <laughs> he's like, I have no friends. All my friends are in Tennessee. Just download it's, a dating app. It's like the opposite of all my exes live in Texas. All my friends live in Tennessee. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, but huh, that's stupid. But Just download a dating app. They do have the Bumble BFF thing. Yeah, do you? it for, do, look for women and men. Yeah, put a, I guess. Put so. an ags on Craigslist and just say you're looking for male companionship. <laughs> nothing sexual just say nothing sexual and you'll I've, be good i feel like there's always an expectation with that though because you say I, nothing sexual just for legal purposes but then like you actually go on the friend date and the guy's like all right so when are you gonna blow me I'm like oh, I'm, come I, on i just wanted a friend i'm gonna put your information on craigslist in Please austin don't. i'm Please going don't. to i'm going to and if, if I can be honest, for I, I don't want a Craigslist friend. <laughs> I think I'd rather have. Uh, I think I'd rather just hang out by myself than have a Craigslist friend. No big deal. I will get you a Craigslist friend, and you don't have any obligation to hang out. But I'll give them your number. I'll give them your number and my email. That way, I can kind of help vet them for you. Actually, I don't want to see their dick pics either. I'll give them your email and your phone number. And hopefully something comes of it. Something's going to come.
I think I'll make friends in the comedy scene once I get acclimated to the, you know, just keep showing up. I, people are friendly here. This this seems to be like a place where I can make friends. I hope so, buddy. I'm rooting for you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay, bye.